This video works through an exam question on linear programming using the simplex method. We can see the problem set up here. We're trying to maximise 3x plus 2y plus 4z subject to these constraints. You can see here we've got 13 marks, so it's quite a hefty question. The first thing we're asked to do is to display it as, as a simplex tableau, the three marks, then perform one iteration for a further three marks, a further iteration for five marks, and then to state whether it's optimal or not, giving a reason for the final two marks. So the first thing we'll do then is set up our simplex tableau. We're going to end up with three rows here. The first row is the objective function line, the top row. And for that, we rearrange the P equation to make it equal to zero. So we take the 3x over to the left hand side, the 2y over to the left hand side, and the 4z. So there's our objective function equation. We now want to make the constraints into equations, and we do that. by simply adding slack variables. So if we call our slack variables R and S, we'll have R for our first constraint equation, and it's now equal to 8, instead of being less than or equal to 8, R taking up the slack. So either it's equal to 8, or if it's less than 8, as it can be, then R will be the difference between this value and 8. We'll do the same with the second constraint with a different slack variable. So we'll call that one S and that's now equal to 21. We don't need to do anything with the greater than or equal to zero for each of our variables as that's assumed in the problem. Okay, so now what we do is we set up our tableau, our top columns P, we then have X, Y, Z, R and S and then we have a total for each row here. So First one then, and we just want the coefficient, how many of each. So the objective functions are top line, we've got 1p, minus 3x, minus 2y, minus 4z, and we've got no slack variables in the objective function, and the total's zero. For our first constraint equation, we've got zero here for P. We've then got 1x, 4y, 2z, 1r, no s, and the total's 8. And then finally for this first part, the second constraint equation will again, no P involved. We've got 2x, 7y, 3z, and this time we've got s as our slack variable, and it's 21. So that's the first three marks. For part b, use the simplex method to perform one iteration, choosing a value in the z column as a pivot. So we've got the z column here. We divide the row total by the values in the column, underneath the objective function line. So the first thing we do is we divide 8 by 2, which obviously gives us 4, and then 21 divided by 3 gives us 7. And obviously the smallest of those is the 2. So indicate that by circling it 
and that is our pivot value. This is our pivot row. So the first thing we do is we convert the pivot element to one by dividing the pivot element by itself. But if we're dividing the pivot element by two, we have to perform the same thing to each element in the row. So we do that to the whole row. What I suggest you do is rewrite the tableau underneath. So perhaps if you put a line through here, and put each element in the equivalent place. So it's the second row down. So we're changing that to one, and we're doing that by dividing by two. So we're dividing the whole row by two. So naught divided by two is obviously naught. We then get half there. Four divided by two is two. One there, a half, naught, and finally four there. So that's the first bit. What we then do is we either add or subtract a multiple of the pivot row to make the values above and below it in the same column zero. So in order to make minus four zero we need to add four. So in other words we need to add two times the old pivot row. So that would give us a zero here, and again, write it in the equivalent position, so that makes that zero. But we've added two times the pivot row, so plus two times, and it's the old pivot row, remember, that we're using here. So that remains us one. We're adding two to minus three, so that gives us minus one. We're adding 8 to minus 2, so that now becomes 6. We're adding 2 to 0. 0 there and 16 here. And then finally we need to change this 3 to 0. So perhaps we're better off using the new pivot row for that if we use the new pivot row and subtract three times the new pivot row. So minus three times, and I'm going to put NPR to signify new pivot row there. So again zero here, we're subtracting um, the new pivot row th three times the new pivot row, so one and a half from two. So that gives us a half. Six from seven, that gives us one. We're subtracting three from three, which obviously gives us a zero that we were after. One and a half from zero, so minus one and a half. Zero from one. And twelve. Um, 3 times 4, 12 from 21 leaves 9. And that's the end of the first iteration. So we've now secured 6 marks. It then says perform one further iteration. Well, we can see from looking at the objective function line that we need to do that because we have a negative here in the x column. So that means that we have to perform another iteration using the x column. It's the only negative value in the objective function line. We do the same as we did previously. We divide, so 4 divided by half is 8, and then 9 divided by a half is 18. So it's this value here that we use as our pivot value probably easier to multiply by 2 than divide by a half, isn't it? So if we multiply the whole row by 2, that will give us 1 at the pivot value. So it's the second row down, we'll get a 1 here, and we will achieve that by times 2. Same as dividing by a half. This point would be 0, this point here will then be 4, 2, 1, 0, 
and 8 here. We then need to change that to minus 1. So if we just add the new pivot row, you can see 1 plus minus 1 gives us the 0 that we need there. That remains as 1 because it's 0. It would then be 4 plus 6 gives us 10. 2 plus 0, 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 0 plus 0. And 8 plus 16, 24. And then finally, we want to change this to 0. So if we subtract the old pivot row, now this one's just plus new pivot row. And this one is minus, and we'll just call it pivot row if it's the old one that we're using. And we get a 0 here. So here we get a half minus a half, which gives us a zero we're after there. Two from one gives us minus one. One from zero gives us minus one there. A half from minus one and a half gives us minus two. Naught from one leaves one there. And 4 from 9 gives us 5 there. OK, so we're nearly there now. That's 11 marks. To finish off, state whether or not this is the optimal solution and give a reason for your answer. Well, yes, it is optimal. We could perhaps write that up here. And we need to give a reason why it's optimal. Because no negative values in objective function. Perhaps we could just put in brackets there, top row, to show we fully understand what's going on. So as there's no negative values in the top row here, we know it's optimal. And that's all that's really required. Sometimes you're required to give values. So if we look here, we can see that P, because we've got the 1 and the zeros, claims this row total. So P equals 24. X, well if we look down the X column again there's a 1 and 0 so that claims the second row total which is 8. Y has mixed numbers so that means Y has a value of 0. Z, again mixed value so a value of 0. R has mixed values, so has a value of 0. And S has got zeros and 1s. The 1 is in the third row, so that claims the third row total, which is 5. And if we put those values back into our initial equations, we can see why it works. Well, P equals 3X plus 2Y plus 4Z, 3 times 8, 2 times 0, 4 times 0. So that gives us a 24, the value of P. Here, we can see that if X is 8, Y is 0, Z is 0, that is why R is 0, because R isn't required there, because X is 8. And here we've got 2 times 8, 16. But that leaves us short, doesn't it? It leaves us short by 5, which is why S is 5.